much, all of you, and uh, truly, um, it was uh, very emotional uh, watching that uh, tribute. I was fortunate enough to be in his presence when he was here last, and uh, I can uh, testify to his greatness. Um, uh, I'd like to start with you, uh, Professor, because you've studied him in great detail, and you know this uh, state and the city of Katak so well. What really made him so influential and what made him so uh, uh, such a powerful figure in uh, Indian poetry and Indian writing? Gauriji, let me begin by saying what a great and extraordinary privilege we have to be given this opportunity, three of us, and my very eminent co-panelist, Sampur Naji, to offer our tribute, you said, but I would like to use the word homage, because poetry is a sacred calling. And Kavi, standing for seer in Sanskrit, and Vetis in Latin for prophet. So you asked me this question as to why it is so important. Arguably, I would say, as an academic, as a professor of English literature, I would say that he was truly a genius. And somebody who was, I would say, he was a local cosmopolitan. Yes. To use the term used by late Anathamurti, you are Anathamurti. By that I mean he was not attracted to xenophobic or insular nativism, nor was he attracted to rootless cosmopolitanism. I would say that he was a citizen of the world in the best sense of the term. Now, with regard to language, somebody who came from a small town and he rubbed shoulder with A.K. Ramanujan, Rita Doe, Dilip Chitre, and those rest of them, I think it was an extraordinary kind of a thing. I think it spoke for the effort that he made and the proposition that if you are outstanding and if you search for excellence, you can reach the stars. I think Jantha Mahapatra, to my mind, is not one of the best. He's the best Indian English poet to emerge from modern Odisha. Sampurna, what, what, what was it that drew you to his poetry? And I know that you really felt very deeply uh, about his poems. What drew you to it? You know, uh, the legacy of Jayantada, as we used to call him, um, is as large, as literally global as uh, Sachi just said. Um, as it is intensely localized on what he could do for young poets starting out. So I have to say that about 20 years ago when I was just stumbling along trying to figure myself out as a budding poet, um, it was Jointuda who sent me in his beautiful calligraphy uh, those letters uh, rejecting my work, which I had sent to Chandrabhaga. That was his, the great gift he gave me. He, uh, he taught me uh, that time is a co-author for every poet. He gave me the gift of attention, of a careful, close reading by a senior poet and encouragement. So he said, you know, this is not yet worked, but why don't you send us some more? And I know he's done that for a lot of oh, our yes. peers. Yeah. And I think that gift we tend to overlook, especially when in today's day and age, it seems very easy to publish poems and we're all very networked. But those days, and I have written about this in my tribute soon after his passing, um, that it was, it required an investment of genuine time and genuine caring. And I think that was the first level at which my respect took root. And when I studied his work, and you know, just before coming out, this is for everyone in the audience, his collected works are now available. It's a tome. And when you go back to his beginnings, and you see that arc right up to the latest book, uh, there is that constant attention to the craft without ever retreating into a hermetic, you know, into the poetic ivory tower, never. And some of that came across in the video that we just saw. So I think that very, very intelligent and very sensitive balancing act that he was able to do between reality and between uh, the affective reality, where he's obviously very moved by what he is seeing and often torn. Yeah. And you know, with that thing about uh, uh, the impassioned opening um, speech really moved me a lot because we forget the link between uh, reportage 
and journalism and stories and the link and the I think he saw that. He saw that what is happening, he has a very beautiful poem in which he says, newspapers fill me with grief and rage. You know, and all I can do is I wonder, what did I do with my hands? What I did with my hands is I picked up a pen and I wrote. You know, so I feel that's the great thing that I can still learn. I'm still learning from him. Right. Yes. And also, uh, I think uh, uh, from what I gather, I've been here now for a few years, uh, the act of meeting him was almost like a pilgrimage for a lot of young writers and a lot of young poets. I mean, they would not dream of leaving Odisha without meeting him. And he was always so welcoming, wasn't he? Kaviriji, I think uh, uh, is so insightful. Each of the things that he said, and the people who have made him in an incredible manner. Each person has a unique story to yes. tell. When I met him, without drawing too much of attention to myself, may I say, the first book of his, which I reviewed in 1992, it was not signed by him, it was not autographed by him. But the first book, when I met him in 1996, when he came on a promotional tour to Hyderabad, uh, sponsored by the Orient Long Band and now Black Swan, he wrote to Sachidanand Mohanty with my good wishes. Next I met him in Katak, he said to Sachi with love. And most recently, in 19, 2013, when I met him, he said, Sachi, from Jayanta Mahamosa and Runu Mausi. Yeah. So look at that. Yeah. But I think it's more interesting to talk a little more about his craft, yes. if, if you allow me. Because I think when we are really celebrating poets and poetry, I think we must do little justice to the art of craftsmanship. And may I say to this learned audience out here that what I found absolutely incredible and stunning is the self-reflexivity that you have. We have met many poets, and they give poetry reading. But the kind of astute scholarship that he revealed, it really took my breath away. Two, two items, two examples I will cite. The first is that, should poem, poetry mean anything to us? Should there be meanings? So we look for recurrences of metaphors and images and similes, traditionally and conventionally in poetry. There is the opposite viewpoint school of thought, represented by Archibald Marklish, typically, which says the poem, poetry should not mean to be, in other words, the cadence, the music, etc., in poetry itself. What does Joyantama Patra say? He said something extraordinary out of the blue. He said, I look at the poem having doors and windows, like Gandhiji said, yeah. that I look at my house having doors and windows, and I would like winds of change to come typically from the outside right. world, but I refuse to be swept off my feet. And that is deeply connected to Hen Swaraj and decolonization of the mind. Yeah. Joyantha Mahapatra was a great lover of admirer of Gandhiji. He said, I have windows, my poems have windows, and I invite the reader to enter through the doors and windows and to discover the magic and miracle for the, of the poems and the meanings themselves. In other words, I'm not interested in the meanings. So is it not talking about reader response theory that each poet, each reader has to really discover things for himself? The second thing, very quickly I'll mention, the second notion is the whole idea of desolation, sense of loss and memory, and he used the word post-memory. Now, memory, of course, is very vital to romantic literature, what's worth thinking and Abbey on words. But what does he say when he's talking about post-memory? He's talking about ancestral memories. The memories dating back to his grandfather, who was supposed to be converted, he says, to Christianity, and the notion of humiliation that he harbored. So poetry becomes a source of redemption. Right. As Mina Alexander says, poetry for psychic survival. So I would say that for him, poetry was a means of redemption by the invocation of memory, and then you have post-memory, and with the help of post-memory, we are trying to really ide seek identity for yourself. And he said poetry, memory is so important because through memory, and that was something, an incredible proposition, he said through memory, we try to really arrange 
the disparate input senses that we have. Something very similar to what I. Richard said, said in Sciences and Poetry. So, Puna, I think poetry to us in our darkest moments is really solace, refuge, you know, a sense of peace, a sense of calm. What, what does his poetry do for you? I was listening also very carefully to what Professor Monty was saying. And I think uh, very often, uh, John Tula, for, for one, also saw the poem as a person. So not as only a, okay. as a person, yeah. when, you read, when you read the poems about poetry, for example, mm. which um, maybe it's only the poets who really gravitate to those poems, but you know, the poem as a wanderer, the poem as a, uh, as a prisoner, the, the, poet, po uh, the poem as a man yes. in a particular geography. Exactly. Yeah. So there is the sense of the poem as being a body. Mm. And that body is ravaged. That body could be in ruins. Okay, so I think this idea that the poem will shore up the ruins is very much related to what you're saying about memory. And I keep, you know, I keep going back to his words because... Uh, in the startlement of what he offers us through the way he works the language um, is where we understand what he's trying to do. Because on the surface, it's very, often they appear very simple. Yeah. He seems to be talking to you, like in, in media res. You know, he's just beginning a conversation with you. But actually what he's doing, he's spoken about this in interviews, that you know, he leaps across time. So he could start with one line, and that line would be now. He has seen something that has shaken him very deeply. And then he leaps back a thousand years, 500 years. You know, there's this astonishing poem called, uh, I think it's called The Hall of Ruins. Yeah. Is that about Kalinga, the, the war? Uh, the, that, that's the 20 uh, sequence, yeah. the, the 20 poem sequence. Uh, there is a sense where he is attempting to not provide us solace so much as remind us, I think, that, uh, you know, these are the things that we do to ourselves. He's got this astonishing line that I'm trying to find from my little book where he, where he wrote, history has no arms. It leaves us to build our snares. So we are building our own snares. And you know, this idea of the poem as documentation is something that I also find very gripping because often poetry is seen as a sort of self-indulgent art. Yeah. But he actually believes that it has a uh, objective reason to exist in this reality. And I think that makes me um, not disrespectful, it makes me think of the multiple ways in which things do happen inside his poems. They could be very small happenings, but things unfold. And if we listen and if we um, pay attention, uh, like he says, you know, the world means what it means. We don't understand the way it's put together. So he's also factoring, the, factoring in plain human incomprehension. And I think it takes a great deal of courage to do that, to say that I don't have the answer, I'm still looking. Yeah, sorry. I I'm just, just to add uh, to something very fascinating that Sampuna mm -hmm. has just added for our to our attention. One is that one is reminded of what T.S. Eliot has said. We have dead words, cliches, and platitudes before us, stale expressions. How do you really infuse newness and novelty? Mm -hmm. So T.S. Eliot had famously said that the poet infuses new life and oxygen into the language of the tribe. And when you are looking at Joint Mahapatra, somebody who did not have the benefit of higher education of the conventional kind, nor was he part of the ox speech crowd itself. But when I looked very closely and I interacted with him, and I saw what he was trying to say and tell us is that, how do you handle words? He said, I just play around with the words. I like to really invest new meanings. And as a result of that, something new comes out, you know, and something revelatory, apocalyptic, something really comes out. So that is something extraordinary to see in the case of Jointo Mahapatra. And just add Wallace Stevens, William Carlos Williams, you know, and Nisi Mezikir, Adil Jesuwala, 
many of them were highly privileged right. had access privileged access to higher education and all that we joined the mahapatra self taught at the age of 40 he wrote his indian english poetry yeah. and then of course shivani review hudson review poetry hey. chicago my god i think it's mind boggling what he has been able to achieve i don't think we have sufficiently understood the greatness and the magnitude of his achievement and his world view i mean uh, it was just uh, quite an extraordinary world view as well uh, talk a little about that and how uh, it really is yes, sleep okay now i think uh, you know it's a brilliant question that you've asked and i think very central to the deliberation that we are having itself one is of course local and global at the same time yeah which is of course so much doubt is the day of course with the documentary and everybody else says almost in a stereotypical manner attracted to manavi to kachori yeah. to the temples of puri the temples of konark and all that but he says in his own autobiography pahini rati the night is still young the dawn is not broken and he says that when he went to iowa iowa university i was writing center and he goes to these places without any you know without application he is invited there but the crucial and the relevant thing our coverage is that he is not able to write anything there he is not able to write anything in tokyo but he produces incredible and marvelous poems here he said so close this to the soil yeah. and rootedness when you are exposed to the best of the poetry and the poetic tradition that is something unique to join the mahapatra time for for us to hear some of his poetry yeah, you know as well. but quickly before yeah. i want to just jump in a little bit here is that join to the had this gift also of as we saw also on that he, of not he has a brilliant line you know he says yet i only know this word which lets me survive inside this liberal ethic is one long error of inexperience who am i to play god with good intentions he was i think always his own critic he was like you know i'm going to do this people are going to read me and be, perhaps even put me on a pedestal i don't belong on that pedestal he was very 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 sure about it. i get that feeling who am i to play god with good intentions you know and i think uh, yeah we should read some of his poems yeah, i just had a food don't you feel permit yeah, sure. see when i was in hyderabad and he was invited taken to from place to place i could see that he was completely fed up <laughs> people asked me how do you write sure. he said well something which comes to my mind have you read any great masters well i haven't read anything and in usmani university over breakfast he told me i was not interested in those promotional tours right. and yet you see his read wallace stevens his joint his read you know nisi mezikil adi jesuvala ek ramanujan the best of the poets so i think the poet needs to be treated mm. with a degree of sensitivity mm. and the poet like joint mahapatra he was not interested in commercialism he was truly to my mind a genuine poet and he wanted to be read rather than fetid uh, right uh, i think that is what every writer needs yes. so if you allow us yes, so please the beginning we'll read out and also i think we should emphasize that we are lucky enough to have uh, his last uh, work with us Uh, I've got it in my hand. I'm I'm not letting it go. <laughs> There's only one copy in the room at the moment. Here it is. It's his last work, which uh, and we were fortunate to get. Brought out by the Kethki Foundation. Yes. And as I said before, his collected works, which is a tome, is out there. And you know, I want to begin uh, because we've been asked for to read two poems. Yeah. I'd like to read both mine. one after the other sure. first one is really i would like to offer it as a homage to jayantada because i think so much of what he offered us was camaraderie so this is a poem that that's a poem of mine that i offer to his memory to the legacy that he left for us camaraderie this is not false spring all about me this forgotten joy the first deluge of the season unleashing unreasonable gaiety everyone voluble bizarre camaraderie at the liquor store little wayward boats school kids streaming back home inside 
We are safe, warm, dry. We have looked out for each other, called, warned, delighted in this unforeseen event that has allowed us to stay close, clink glasses, read under bright yellow lamps overflowing. And I think because so much of uh, John Tudor's, uh, uh, his poems have rain in them. And I picked this poem as I landed in Bhubaneshwar, it started raining, and I said, I have to read a poem of mine which has rain and offer it uh, to this, this presence that we have. And this one that I'm going to read is the last three um, um, stanzas from a longer poem called Hesitant Light by Jointo Mahapatra. Where we go is important. Life's choices are few. When someone passes on outward into thought, perhaps growing smaller, lies buried in this earth, the rise and fold of hills, the outcrops of rock, the stone skin of ancient walls, that shelter the faraway footfalls of secret hierarchies. Above the ruin of days, another December dawn crawls along the ground in its hesitant light but swift and hidden, to be imprisoned by this thing that was like a door that had no walls behind it, and still held on to the inconceivable breadth of the world, its sweetness, its treasures, its ends, and its endlessness. Thank you. That was quite marvelous. Thank you, Karunji. Uh, I just oh, read yeah. two poems yeah. and a short extract in Oriya, because yeah. he started writing poetry in Oriya yeah. 30 years after he did that. Yeah. And the first English poem was published in 1967. Yeah. The title is Evening Ritual, and it's so important because I was a vice chancellor in Koraput, yeah. Central yeah. University of Koraput. After a visit to Koraput village, somewhere, there are these barren hills which no one climbs. Somewhere too, a funeral group waits patiently in a jungle clearing. For the body which will not return to ash somewhere, there is an evening treating underfoot, the sleeping village in its mud choked breath, while old fireflies only let in the sprawling darkness once again. Mean of me. I realized to come into the light of the old man's lamp and point out the moon-washed peaks revealed in his daughter's mirror, full of his tears, the look of a woman's limbs quickening inside her as I tie her up in the long heaps of mandia, the tenderness and ochre of a land bound together with the bodies of crates and cobras. And I come to the last stanza. The last time I know, I took what I could see. Now perhaps I'll wait for morning my sleep nourished from people who had caught the moon in their tears, the shadow thick with the ashes of burnt stars. Somewhere, August will be August still, and over the hills will float poets' dead words, and I shall forgive myself this, for I am only a man. One more poem, and, and I will end. The next is from Shadow Space collection called Shadow Space. We refer to living in Orissa. The title of the poem appropriately is called Living in Orissa. Living in Orissa. Something here, perhaps a fatal spirit, something that recalls centuries of defeat. Defeat? Kalinga War? Mahabharata? The memories of defeat, the memories of glory. They come together in his poems. So ought to live here, entered in sickness and disease, in the past of un uncomprehended totems and the split of blood of ancestors, one would wear like an amulet. Today, the darkness of our own shadows, 
slips over the unheard, uncared for cemeteries by the river. Someone keeps walking down the steel, across the ravenous dust between the graves, waiting like an ancient dead. Someone goes on dancing at the door of indifferent temples, carrying pain in an eyeless face. Only shadows shift now. They have the eyes of a defeated spirits, the old, old eyes. I'll skip the next poem due to lack of time and allow me to end this, his own, his poetry in Oriya. Yeah. The, the language that he loved so much. Right. And he said, I want my, our own people to read, not in a chauvinistic sense, but in an egalitarian sense, which only the best poet can really hope to match. Allow me to read from Bahini Rati. Part memoir, but part poetry also. As you're going through this memoir, mm. each line is a, is, is a verse. Right. Each line is so extraordinarily insightful. And it makes you stand and take notice. I just need an extract. Duniyar bohi samastanga pahe bhinna bhinna. Mo duniyar bohi re ghasa poyara chitra thai. Nadi thi bohi jai thai. Sahara gachara ghancha patara bhitara dehi surja pasi jai. किंतु अल्प समय पर बाहर जाए ए बही को पढ़ियो पई चेष्टा करे आउ पढ़े किंतु से सब होए नहीं पढ़ा अर्थ खोजी बाहर करबा उचित पुली मो मने करे नहीं एंती सुंदर दुनिया रे अर्थ खोजी बारे लाभ अछि जो दुनिया रे स्वप्न रे गुण अछि पिला बेलु निजन जो दुनिया हमे तैयार करू हमर परिस्थिति हम अवस्था ए दुनिया रे पोषण करू थाए केबे 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 मो दुनिया रे इतिहास गुटिए कोटी हो ही जाए, जो इतिहास बोली पारे ना ही मो, मो परिवार का इतिहास, मो अनुतप्त हो ही सारे इतिहास, जो उठी किसी मानो जो की कथा हुई ने, जो उठी बंचिवार पड़े उठे बंधो दुनिया रे, जो उठी जानर सुच्छा आलू, क्या बड़ा देखे ही पारे, सपना उठे असंधि सपना रो, जैसे को भलो पाई बड़े सपना, जो सेठी मोपरी लोग को बंचवा कुछ चेष्टा करे, जो लोग को टियोनमा को देखा जाए नहीं, और जुर्स होता है, आकर बात माँ बिना बोलू था है, सेल उच्चवर निरोबुतर का कुछ मायने करे, सेठी की बोधी है मोह दुनिया, सेठी की, थैंक यू। थैंक यू सो मच बोथ ऑफ यू, इट वाज लाइक अ मास्टर क्लास एंड आई थिंक वेरे